talk about all the good things in the gaming stuff. What should we kick things off with, guys? Yeah, I want to talk what I've been playing. How about that? Let's do it. What you been so, playing, Brian? What I've been like doing instead of grinding games. Destiny. Instead of hitting yeah, 750 in Destiny. Very angry. Yeah. So uh, one of the fun announcements that came out of E3 was uh, the Lego um, update. It's not an update. It's an expansion pack. It's the Forza Horizon 4 Lego Speed Champions. The uh, Realism Breaker p- update. Yeah, the Realism <laughs> Breaker. Got so, it. Um, mm. If you have Game Pass Ultimate, or if you have Game Pass for PC, Forza Horizon 4 is actually free on PC. Uh, and then LEGO Speed Champions is about uh, $18 to download just the the expansion uh, on top of that. So, you know, if you already have Horizon 4, not a bad deal. So, you know, it's a pricey expansion, but it's got a lot of content in it. And what it does is it opens up a new zone in Forza Horizon 4 that is completely Lego themed, right? Mm. The buildings are made out of Legos. The plants are made out of Legos. The cars are made out of Legos. Like everything, like there's, uh, you know, tractor trailers that are Legos. It's that's cool. just completely Lego themed. Like not everything, like the ground is still ground, right? It's still the, you know, it looks like realistic ground. The mountains in the distance are still, you know, realistically rendered mountains in the distance. But for the most part, the stuff around you, the stuff that you're actually going to crash into is all made out of Legos, which makes the racing actually incredibly fun because you lose this, you lose the, the feel of like, Oh, this is super serious time. No, man, I'm racing a Lego car, Lego Ferrari. And yeah, well, no, I've got a mini Cooper that's made out of Legos. (laughs) And the thing goes like 180 miles an hour. It, it handles like a Ferrari <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> well, it's Legos. Yeah. And it's completely charming. When I play racing games, I usually go for the cockpit view because, like, you know, I want to be, like, kind of immersed in it. I want to feel like I'm actually driving, you know, a, a Lamborghini Diablo, you know, around a course. And I'm cornering and I'm, I'm trying not to actually touch other cars because I'm trying to actually, like, pretend in my mind this is a race. You, yeah. But once you put me in a Lego car... Things change a little bit. The stakes change a You're little bit. You're hitting everything, right? right? All of a sudden, when I hit another car and bricks are like flying around <laughs> off, off of the cars, like that's fun. That adds to realism. So I pull back on the camera so I can actually see my car, you know, like have that follow chase camera. That's cool. And and I actually race that way. It's, it's actually pretty fun. It, you know, it doesn't change the formula of Forza Horizon a lot. You still kind of have this open map and you drive to different events around the map to... Uh, in this case, earn bricks. You can build a house and a garage and that kind of stuff. Um, wow. Kind of yeah. as your home. But you're not actually building it like you'd build Legos. Like you're kind of selecting from pre made okay. yeah. ha- structures. So you're not actually like putting these things together. Um, but it's pretty fun. Like there's a bunch of different Lego cars. And they're all how, based around. How do you Lego earn cars. the Lego cars? Um, you got to basically just compete in different events and you kind of upgrade your Lego skill set. Okay. And, uh, they just unlock for you over time. So it's like a whole, it's like a separate uh, car tree that you're unlocking, essentially. There's a car tree for every mm-hmm. race that you finish. You're earning bricks um, that go toward your your the building of your house and the building nice. and, and unlocking cars. When you go cockpit That's view, cool. is it actually all yeah. Legos, like detailed Lego? Yes. If you go cockpit view in a Lego car, the car That's is awesome. made out of Lego. Uh, the thing that's really that's missing cool. here, though is that there's no VR support in for Forza Horizon mm. 4, which mm. really blows. Because like at this point, I've moved on to um, Drive Club on PlayStation VR, and I've been playing a lot of Dirt 4 on uh, the Vive. And while I think that Forza Horizon 4 is like a better driving game as a package, there's just more to it, and it's yeah. it's more fun because of the structure of it. And they got Legos I now. I do miss having VR, especially for driving games. There's, there's something about... Glancing up at a rearview mirror re- realistically, oh, that's cool, yeah. or like turning over to see like the car that you're racing is right next to you, as opposed to like pushing over on a stick or you know pushing a button to see yeah. next to you. Like, I think that driving games benefit from VR in like a huge way. I can and the see next that Forza for sure. game won't be the Horizon series; it'll be you know like the the realistic style Forza Horizon or Forza, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. They they do kind of like those two series of forza it's like horizon is the more goofy one or the more fun one Mm -hmm. and then forza what is it called uh i think it might just be called forza motorsports where it's more about like racing on tracks okay yeah realistic racing real about things yeah 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 
But I've always preferred the Horizon series because I did a lot of Gran Turismo back on like the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, which is all just tracks, like ultra realistic, trying to like get the perfect line and all that. Whereas the Horizon series, you're, you know, you're just blasting through town. You're, you, when you hit rocks, rock walls and stuff, you don't just stop. The rock wall just explodes and you keep going through the countryside. You know, like it's that's perfectly it's just realistic. It's meant to be more <laughs> fun and more, more, um, <laughs> That, it's like, it's the same fun. reason I enjoyed, you know, Need for Speed when exactly. I could have giant wheels and just do what I wanted to do. Exactly. It's exactly. the fantasy of racing versus the realism yeah. of racing. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want right. to be on a racetrack. Yeah, you don't well, want to collide with fun. the wall and die. That's not fun. <laughs> there's fun in both. You know, like there's fun in being like ultra precise and like really trying to like learn where the apex of turn four is exactly true, true, true. where where to come out of turn four so that you set up yourself perfectly for turn five. You know, like that kind of stuff is fun, but it's mostly memorization. Mm -hmm. Mm. Whereas like the more arcade racers like Need for Speed or or Horizon 4 are more about just reacting to what's in front of you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So there's less. So you can just, for me, it's easy. It's more fun at this point in my life to just jump into a couple of races on Horizon and not have to memorize the course to get good at it. But to just react to what's happening, and now with the Lego expansion, it just adds this feeling of joy. That's you know, cool. like this feeling of like <laughs> it's really fun. So, I mean, I highly recommend. Briar's over there in his Lego car, giggling along. We need a Briar Lego <laughs> yeah. stream. Ferrari Friday. Yeah, that's what the people need. Yeah, yeah. for every, they do, every Friday. They do have Ferraris. Yeah, <laughs> Ferrari Friday with Briar Lego edition. Did you ever play? <laughs> it? So I, I haven't played a lot of racing games, so I, I'm very. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not very familiar with what's available right now, but did you ever play uh, Road Rash way back in the day? Yeah. And on the Genesis? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm yeah. i still surprised that there hasn't been a Road Rash revival. Like somebody mm. I'm surprised hasn't too. taken that franchise and brought it forward and like been on bikes and kicking people like on the – that was so cool. Like you, it was like combat racing, and I feel like that could totally work in today's setup. Like if you have that open world, yeah. open road type of thing and – you have these uh, other bikes or cars coming up, and you have these abilities to kick them and all that, and upgrade your stuff. Like, that would be, I'd play that. You know what game I really liked that's, like, you know, in the realm of racing is the micro machines. Like, Ooh, way yeah. back in the day, where you had yes. the tiny little cars and you're driving on like a, a desk or a bookcase or something. I love Yeah, that was fun. I love that's that. kind of the feeling I get from playing Lego, actually. It's like a very mm. similar, like, I'm playing with that. toys here. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it, yeah. it, it adds a level of joy, like a, a level of. I'm, I'm struggling to find find the right word, like frivolity. Maybe I don't know exactly what the word is, but it, it's a ton of fun. It just it just takes you it takes you out of like being super serious about winning this race and look at this Lego like cow like bashing Lego into cow pieces. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Uh, you know, like the trees are made out of, like, you know, do you remember like the Lego set trees that are like, they're like the green yep, kind of pine trees and it's just one piece and it sticks on to the ground. Yep. That thing goes flying in the air. It's just hilarious. So I didn't know this, but apparently Road Redemption actually came out in 2017. It is like a spiritual successor. Oh, really? To Road Rash. I wouldn't mind checking that out. Huh. I'm going to have to check this out. I had no idea. This is crazy. I wonder if it's any good. It got a 9 out of 10 on Steam. Oh, 5.7 oh. out of 10 on IGN. 59% Metacritic. Ooh. I mean, Fran was a part of IGN. Do we believe IGN? I think this mm, might be an acquired point. taste. Highly questionable. <laughs> 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 I'm going to put that on my checkout list right there. See if it's any good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So. Might as well. Legos in Forza. Sounds like a good time. So it is. It's, it's like, a pretty good time. Some people were a little upset, though, Briar, weren't they? Why would people be upset that Legos were in Forza? Because they go to Forza for a realistic experience. You know, the graphics so realistic, and then they turn to the left, and there's some laughing man in a Lego car, and it's Briar. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can totally see if they did, like, the mainline Forza series, the, the Forza Motorsports, like which is really super serious, and yeah. it's all about, like, you know, tuning your suspension just right so you can you can really like cut the corner on turn two and you don't fly in the air on Laguna Seca. You know, I can understand that. Like that those people who are super into the the Forza Motorsports series getting upset if they were to add like something really ridiculous 
to yeah. it. However, Forza Motorsports or Forza Horizon is like the kind of the side series, which is much more frivolous. It's much more fun. It's it's all about just like living out these fantasies. You know, in the last one, Forza Horizon 3, they added Hot Wheels to the game. Mm. You know, yep. so like all of a sudden there's like Hot Wheel cars running around and there's Hot Wheel tracks That's with the loop to breaking some uh, immersion there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, not to me. All of a sudden I can live out my childhood fantasy of actually driving around on these Hot, hot Wheels you know, like tracks and stuff. Yeah. And I, I think like that's super fun. the guys are playing the wrong game then. They need to go play the serious Forza game and leave the leave the horizon for all the silly stuff. There's totally, like, there's there's room out there for, like, all types of these games, like Project yeah. Cars or even iRacing. If you're really serious about racing games, you need to just, like, ditch Forza altogether and go over to iRacing, which is a monthly fee just to play it. It's fully VR compatible. Wow. Sets up to one of those racing, you know, simulators with the with the moving chair to simulate G forces. Like, oh what the fuck God. are you doing? <laughs> if you're the kind of person who are, who's upset about Legos being in Forza, you're probably playing the wrong game. You need to get into iRacing racing and like, you know, just like let's go full series about this here, folks. <laughs> what have you been doing with your racing life? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> right? What are you even doing? <laughs> like, yeah. You're definitely playing the wrong game. Playing the wrong game. It actually sounds cool. I've never heard of that. That's, yeah. Oh, I racing is intense, man. That's cool. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like that for like a flying simulator. I would be terrified. Mm. Don't want to crash like, your bones. No, I don't want to feel the crash as I'm terrible at the game. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the first time I tried out um, VR or real, it was I think it was called Project Cars with VR in it. The first car they put you in is a go-kart you know like those really fast Ooh, go-karts cool. <laughs> yeah the problem was is those things don't have any suspension so they're just like da -da 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 you know like really like fast vibrations yep. and i got the headset on and that thing's going da -da 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 -da. <laughs> oh, wow. and i'm like whoo, whoo, whoo. <laughs> big breaths big breaks take this thing off i never played project cars with the with the vr on again <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh yeah, how um I feel like getting nauseous in racing games with VR is got to be pretty common, right? Cuz you're going fast. I think it, it totally depends on how they do it. For me, mm -hmm. I play Dirt 4, which is a rally racing game, right? So you, there's a lot of bumps and there's a lot of you do actually take jumps in those cars. Mm -hmm. I don't get sick at all playing that game. Oh, interesting. Um so I, I think it's about you know how they actually handle the VR. They've got to smooth out the experience a little bit for you. Yeah. Um also being in the car and like seeing your dashboard and your steering wheel and like all the controls aside from being super cool because it actually feels like you're sitting in you know a, a mini cooper or a subaru wrx race car it also kind of plants you in that world in a way it makes it feel yeah more grounded in reality more thing. grounded right yeah yeah I, I think the just the creation of vr games in general is really interesting because you mm. have to you have to employ completely different techniques of making video games you can't just say you know yeah let's put teleportations in here everywhere because mm. that's going to disorient the players and make them feel nauseous so i find it really really interesting for just how vr games are going to come along in the future yeah so yeah it's it's completely the different how you make those games some of the first batch of PlayStation VR games, I can't remember. There was one specifically that I streamed, actually, that made me so nauseous so quickly. And all it was, it was like a first-person kind of, you know, investigation-type game. And oh, it was all in black yeah. and white. But the way the player walked through the yep. world just instantly made me nauseous. Jeez, and I've never yeah. gone back to the game because yeah, you know, nobody wants to be like that. Even, even also. Simple things like walking, you can't, you have to really think about how you're going to create that for the player because yeah. we get motion sick very easily. Yeah. So you know, what's there. interesting is a lot of games have solved motion sickness by actually using the controls where you grab, you use your arms as legs. Oh, and that yeah. apparently helps you with motion sickness because you mm -hmm. actually feel like you're moving as opposed to just standing still and upright. Yeah, and then all of a sudden your player starts moving. You're like, whoa, yeah. what yeah. the heck is in start... That makes sense. Yeah, it's big. I remember uh, the first time I tried Google Earth out in VR. I, the first thing I went to do is like stand on top of some of the world's tallest buildings and just like check out the view. Yeah, I had to kneel on the ground because <laughs> it was like, this is like, whoa, man, I'm so high up here. <laughs> it was crazy. I showed it to my wife and she had no problem with it. I, I'm a little scared of uh, heights anyway. Ah. 
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's really, it's really cool. It's really cool what you can do. Yeah. With yeah. Game. Good stuff. What else you been playing? Uh, I also been playing. This is an older game. This actually came out in December of 2018. This is called Mutant Year Zero. It came out on Xbox and PC. Um, it's currently available on Game Pass as well, which is why I'm playing well, it. Playing it. That's great. Um, what yeah. kind of game is it, Brian? Okay, so it's a strategy game. Think of um, XCOM, but with kind of fewer players or fewer people to control. Okay. Um, you got three people in your crew. They're all mutants. One is a pig man called Boar Man. Boar Man. <laughs> One I... is a duck man called Duckman. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> And one is kind of a, a lady with, like, devil horns. Oh, and they so are your crew. They're, like, your players, right? So if you get into combat with any of them and they die, they're dead. you gotta, you got to make it through with games those. When, when you die, you're dead. Like, I love games that do that. Because, yeah, it's a, like State of Decay does a similar thing, which is why I actually really liked it. Because yeah. you, you can control a bunch of people in your camp. But if they die, they're gone. So all their resources are gone. You know, if they were the best runner, best fighter, you lose one of your best people. So I love totally. stuff that gives me consequences. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. This game, uh, the story is that, you know, there's been some kind of apocalypse on Earth. And you are a resident of, like, kind of one of those last bastions of humanity uh, called uh, the Ark. However, in the Ark, the Ark is filled with mutants. And obviously, you're mutants, right? You're pig man, yeah, duck pig man, man duck and devil girl. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. However, the mystery is we've never actually seen other mutants outside of the Ark. And the guy who kind of runs the Ark is full on human. So, like, you don't, don't really know what's going on here. We're not real sure. Definitely something weird is happening here, but we're not real sure. Um, one of the other, one of the other kind of, uh, striders, who are the people who go out and look for supplies and stuff for the for the residents of the Ark, goes missing and says he found this place called Eden, which is like a paradise and untouched by the apocalypse. So mm. that's the story of the game. Is you're going out to find uh, Eden, this uh, kind of wonderland. Uh, the gameplay itself is super interesting. You walk around almost like an RPG where your group kind of just like walks around and follows you around and you can explore the areas that you're in looking for parts for upgrades for your armor and, and guns and stuff. Um, but when you're in combat, the movement changes from direct control with a thumbstick to much more of a uh, strategy game where you're actually moving your characters. Like mm. each character has like, yeah, turn-based, uh, you know, like each character can move, say, seven spots, can fire, you know, another seven away from them, depending on the gun they're using. Uh, you've got guns that are silenced, uh, so you can ambush um, individual so so soldiers on the other team, or you've got louder guns. Uh, height plays a big deal, so if you get to higher ground, it's easier for you to hit enemies, but it's harder for them to hit you. Percentages mm -hmm. play a big part in it where you'll have a percentage of actually hitting your enemy with a specific shot, as well as a percentage of getting a crit. Right. Uh, and sometimes getting that crit is super important because you might see a guy who's like kind of wandered away from the big group of enemies and you want to kill him with silenced weapons before an alarm gets raised and the whole, you know, the whole force descends on you because there could be 10 or 20 enemies on a map. Um, so you, you want to make sure that you are going to kill him in one turn of all three of your players with silenced weapons so that, you know, the alarm doesn't get raised and it really makes it a lot of fun. Uh, when you're just out exploring, you can pull out a flashlight and you can walk faster, which makes exploring a little easier looking for weapon parts and stuff. Um, but when you get closer to enemies, you got to put your flashlight away and you start to sneak more, uh, so you can ambush people and you don't get ambushed. That's cool. It's, it's a really fun game. Uh, it works great on Xbox and on PC. I actually started playing it on Xbox in December. Um, but I, I moved to PC because on the launch edition Xbox, the game actually ran really choppy. Oh, and yeah, I, I didn't really, I didn't really like playing it on the original Xbox. Uh, and I don't have the Xbox one S or the X. Gotcha. Um, okay. gotcha. So, so I just know. stopped playing yeah. it because it was free anyway. Uh, but playing it on PC now, uh, you know, obviously it runs much smoother on on a much more powerful PC, 
and I'm really having a blast with it. Yeah. I looked up some gameplay and it looks really cool. I love the way the characters look. I love the way mm. the exploration looks. So, yeah, this looks like a game that I'd actually enjoy. That's cool. Why There's not? a ton of personality to it and the yeah. mysteries that are in the world that you're discovering are actually really interesting. I think it's based on a comic book. Okay. Cool. Um the XCOM gameplay I really like. I enjoy that a lot. And it's interesting how you're saying mm. like they they merge the uh RPG explore aspect when then mm. combats XCOM style right there. Is that really fluid or does it like, actually have a loading screen? Super fluid. So like you you're just wandering on a map using your left analog stick mm -hmm. to to control one character and the other two characters just follow you around and you know you're just you know, moving around, checking stuff out. But once you see an enemy then you just like you just left click I think and it automatically brings you into combat mode and you can start individually placing your characters like behind cover, um, switching weapons, deciding are they going to play Overwatch? Are they going to you know fire? Are they going to reload? Like what are they going to do this nice. turn? Yeah. Um, and then each character is very upgradable, so you can get you know more movement. You can get special abilities like the Duckman can float in the air uh, and so, get a height advantage. If your character dies, then in this playthrough, it's done. Yeah. Right. In this particular mode, you can't like recruit no, another no. one. No. So no, you can't. After combat, your character will come back. Oh. You will revive. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I was thinking yeah. XCOM level and like. I'm scarred. Yeah, no, I'm scarred from XCOM. I don't think that would work. <laughs> I don't think that would work because you've only got three characters that are playable at all. Okay. So eventually you'd just mm. be down to two. Yeah, yeah. And then one. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in XCOM you, you can really have to more, save scum the hell out then, of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, XCOM. Yeah, that's how it is in State of Decay as well. Like, you can go and find other people in the world. It's just like, you know, you lose all the loot that the person had on them. And if you did happen to take your best forger your best fighter out with you you lose that person which is yeah. a huge bad thing because you might just get you know you might just get timmy who's just he doesn't really do anything yeah like, my oh, favorite yeah. thing to do in xcom yeah. is to actually name my characters people i know like yeah. in real oh. life so like if i brought tefty watts pope and fran to you know to a battle and pope didn't make it out, i'd be like oh you know oh well you know shit happens <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> when I played XCOM, we named uh, named the people after subs, or right, we'd have like, yeah, 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 yeah totally that's perfect. And then, that's a great idea. Inevitably, yeah. people would die. I'd feel bad about it, right? It was tough. <laughs> yeah, man. they feel bad. It'd be like, like so. ninety percent chance it's going to hit this guy, and it does no damage. And I'm like, uh, why you do this, XCOM? Like the RNG was so brutal <laughs> in that. Did you play both XCOM games, like the newer versions, XCOM and XCOM Two, or did yeah, you I didn't beat them XCOM though. Two? I didn't didn't beat them. Yeah. But I, I did play them, yeah. They were fun. Yeah. 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 Good I really liked the first one. I didn't like the second one as much as I liked the first oh, really? one. I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah. I I don't remember why enough to be eloquent about why it was. I just remember not liking it yeah. as much as I liked that one. Yeah, they were both really enjoyable. Maybe it was just the story. Also, that the the latest one, the expansion stuff that they did. It's good stuff. But, like, it's I haven't played games. the expansion. They're tough. They're very yeah, they're brutal. Very hard. Yeah. Yeah. They're meant to be played I actually played, played the first one on iPad. Oh, nice. Which was awesome. Because yeah. I could just sit in bed and play XCOM. Yeah. But they, they didn't do that with the second one. I, XCOM 1 came out for, like, everything. Yeah. XCOM 2 was just a PC game, as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, what else we got? What? Well, um, I'm sure... I, I saw someone in chat mention, I wonder if they're going to talk about this. We are... Uh, so there was recently a hearing over in the United Kingdom area of the world, uh, and uh, EA was there, and also Epic was there. So they were there to talk about loot boxes and whether it is an ethical practice, whether it you know needs to be changed, whether it makes people get into gambling, or if or if it is just straight up gambling. If that is, if it is the case, that would be illegal. Kids can't gamble. So it's turned into sort of a meme at this point because. When the this lady who was representing EA was asked about, do you consider loot boxes an ethical practice? Hmm. She said, we don't call them loot boxes. We call them surprise mechanics. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so that in itself was a complete meme because it was just like, well, you know, they're not loot. They're surprise mechanics. And the reason that they went down the surprise mechanic route is because her argument for 
these surprise mechanics being in games was that uh, people enjoy surprises. <laughs> people love surprises. You get a surprise, you know, million dollars. Whoop! Sup- amazing surprise party. I would ticket. enjoy a <laughs> surprise a million dollars. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Want to surprise pay for shit though, <laughs> dude? Surprise, surprise yeah. parking tickets, surprise. Uh, oh, oh, the cor- boiler, the boiler blew. Uh, surprise! Uh, surprise. <laughs> oh, well, that makes it all better. Surprise jury duty. <laughs> all right. Ah, surprise! <laughs> and uh, they she then continued with the. It's been a part of toys forever. You know, you go and buy like this thing. You're not really sure what you're gonna get. You know, like you get like a group of aliens or Pokemon cards is a good example where you can buy mm-hmm. a pack of Pokemon cards and it's random what you get. Um, so she said that the, these have been in toys forever, and that she believed that the way that they've implemented these surprise mechanics are ethical and fun. So that's why they went down the surprise mechanics route because they're comparing it to Pokemon cards and Kinder Eggs, which I don't know if you want to use Kinder Eggs because it's illegal in America. So I don't know if you want to. What is Kinder yeah, Eggs, by the way? Yeah, I'm not. I don't actually know don't what Kinder know, Eggs you don't are. Know what a Kinder Eggs? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I feel so sad for him. So, well, first of all, it's delicious chocolate, but it's a small egg, like small ish egg. Um, and it's hollow on the inside. So you break it apart and it's got a toy inside. Okay, I've heard is about Is the egg made out of chocolate? Yes. And then there's a toy inside the egg. Yes. And you don't know what the toy is going to be, but you, you know, know you're getting chocolate. You, yeah, usually there's like some kind of theme, like Disney princess, for example, and you'll get one of 10 Disney princesses or whatever in the egg. It's a, mm-hmm. If the chocolate melted, would it actually melt into the toy in the center? No. So there's a little, so there's the egg and then it's hollow inside and there's like a capsule okay. that the toy is in. So it's like a plastic Oh, like one of those cap- kind of things you'd get out of a vending machine? Yeah, yeah, it's it's very similar to that, but it's kind of a mm-hmm. bit thinner because the egg's quite small. So yeah, yeah, no no toys are easily accessible without actually breaking yeah. this capsule Can't just up and getting bite it in and like take now, the head off. I really want to know why those plastic. are illegal in America, and I'm positive it's because somebody's tried to swallow the the plastic toy. It's because kids <laughs> could potentially swallow the plastic toy. This but comes back to what we were talking about. The capsule, dude. It's right. a capsule. You have to open the capsule. And this came, comes back capsule. to what we were talking about before the podcast. Natural selection. <laughs> yeah. The dumb ones need to die. <laughs> we can't <laughs> let everybody live. We're running out of room if and you, food and water. If you eat a Tide Pod, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, thank you for eating that Tide Pod. You have done our Thanks job. for playing the game of humanity. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> you lost this round. <laughs> lost I went to, I went to, I think it was Target. I was just looking for like some cat treats. Got to the tie pods, they are locked behind a barrier. You you have to get them to unlock the tie pods to oh, get I, them. I I and think then. we should like put those right out in the main aisle, right? <laughs> they should be uh they should be right at the cash register. You know, <laughs> like as an impulse buy. Ooh, tie pod challenge. I think I will. <laughs> Next to the candy bars, exactly. They're brightly colored like candy. It's perfect. That's what the problem was. Kids thought they were candy because they have bright colors and they look delicious. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like a plastic bag. This is not a toy. Like, what yeah. did, <laughs> like, who are we trying to protect here? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> well, back back to surprise mechanics. It is uh, really funny seeing them like try to back the the loot box thing and like yeah. just so much backpedaling and trying to just be like oh it's you know it's not that big of a deal you know yeah you see the the only time that i can i can see that is if i can buy most of the things for what i want i see a skin in you know league of legends and i'm like i want that skin i buy it but then maybe they have a special event where it's like you know there's five skins that you can get out of this loot box do you want to try and get it all right, but th- but Fortnite and like a lot of other people's whole f- well, not Fortnite, but a lot of EA stuff that they've done in FIFA, especially, it's all pure RNG. There mm-hmm. is no direct purchasing involved. At least I don't think I don't play FIFA, but I know I, there's a lot of gambling involved. In, I think in all the the, the, the Pokemon guys and like Tops and Fleer, like all the baseball card trading companies, are like, whoa. Why are you like? <laughs> don't throw don't us compare us, us because we're doing the sh- same shit over here. We've been doing it for seventy <laughs> years. You're getting a physical product. You're just buying ones <laughs> and zeros. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's part of the argument is that if you are buying these Pokemon cards or baseball cards or Magic cards, you're having a physical thing that you can hold on to, and then usually go up. A lot of them go up in price, and you can sell them 
Um, mm-hmm. But with these things, you're not getting anything tangible. It's an online product that yeah. you're, doesn't I, have any actual value. I can speak from the viewpoint of somebody who was totally addicted to buying baseball cards when I was a kid. I spent yeah. all my money on baseball cards. I was always trying to get like my favorite you know, yeah. players. Like it totally feels like the same thing to me. It's, it's, yeah. you know, they're using like RNG basically, and I'm just buying a bunch of shit that I don't want in the hopes of getting something I do want. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's know, the same thing. It I feels think predatory Pokemon... toward children. You know, like it I just mean, it does. is. Yeah, Dude. they're made towards children, right? Yeah. I, I think Pokemon cards were actually banned in some countries for that reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I spent all my money as a kid on magic cards. Not joking. Not memeing right here. Like legit. <laughs> When I had money, I was like, I'm going to the card shop. I'm buying some magic cards. I'm going to see what I pull. Yeah. And it, it, well, the, the problem is it's so accessible online, whereas with the card shop or card packs, you have to physically get the money, go to the shop, which usually involves yeah. some sort of transportation from your, your parents that then yeah. also have yeah. the money ready for you to then get those cards, whereas – Online, if you somehow if you stole your parents' card, you can put it in there and rack up like five hundred dollars worth of charges within a very short amount of time. And yeah, th- th- there's no like, there's no easy, um, there's no easy stopgap right there to be like, well, clearly this is you shouldn't be doing this, kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. There, there's I can no see that there's no clerk the... at the store being like, well, this isn't right. your card. You're not. <laughs> you're 10 and you have a credit card oh, yeah no, this really makes much sense <laughs> i could totally see that being how they they separate the two things where it's like online you can just sit at your desk or on a phone you know with fortnite you can have it on literally any device now and you can just purchase 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 and there's no kind of middleman to stop that from happening mm-hmm. um so i could see how that they could separate it like that and that would that would probably work for them separated like that it is the same behavior in that people are addicted to wanting to get the thing that they want so they just keep it's that dopamine money. hit right it's, yeah i did yeah. it with pokemon cards. yeah i mean it, it's obviously it's very easy for a kid to get that feeling in that rush and want to see it again and my nephew's talking about how much money him, him and his friends have spent on um on like fortnite skins and all that and i'm like how when i <sighs> That's like a computer, dude. How? Why did you yeah. spend that money on that? You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's we've talked about it before. I just I don't really know what the answer is. Besides, it's, it's we got into a whole discussion about what if you know the government just bans loot boxes and how that could be difficult because then you have people who know nothing about video games creating rules and legislation for video games and who knows what kind of problems that could well cause. watch if, if they don't self-regulate they're forcing the government to step in like they have every opportunity to self-regulate here they have a they have a organization the esrb that's literally made for this purpose that yeah is i agree with that completely yeah. ignoring the issue yeah yeah, I think so it's like they, what we talked you, about before where, you know, totally. they need to say if there's loot boxes in a game, then it gets this rating. And then there you go. So it, say, it literally says on it, loot boxes are involved on the actual packaging of the game. And then they have to rate it over a certain age if that is involved. And then at that point, it's down to, you know, people listening to age restrictions and reading. I don't think the government is going to use such a... Uh, they won't. A... Uh, <laughs> small blade i think that they usually swing a hammer not a they do. yeah not a uh that's why the they you know they need to s- step in and figure it out themselves like you said briar because otherwise they're just going to say no i don't think no they're loot capable boxes, no microtransactions from what i understand about the esrb of recent is that they're in no place to, the, their management is completely borked um and there are no no place to be setting rules for anybody so it looks like the government, you know, the governments of the world are going to have to step in uh, on behalf of the, the citizens and, you know, they're going to swing the hammer. They're mm-hmm. going to say, look, you know, either get them out of the game or you, you can only sell these things to, you know, people who are 18 plus or whatever. Um, they can even but either way, to- it's going to get rid of them completely, which I think benefits all of us. Yeah, they could, they could even make it to where you have to verify that it's your card, you know, and there there's things that can be done beside the people could have done on in their own individual games to yeah. make it not happen. And it's, I don't, I don't want the government involved in gaming stuff. Cause I think it could indeed be a bad road that we end up going down, but yeah, it's but <laughs> like, you know, if the, if, 
yeah. they're not capable of self-regulating this stuff. And they're not. I mean, you look at Randy Pitchford's statement about, you know, there's no microtransactions in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like the the game companies themselves, the people who make the game, don't even, like, really seem to get the lingo or, like, fully understand what's going on. Or they're being just, you know, evasive about it. Like, Yeah, I think that was a, a language issue, not understanding the the difference between microtransactions and loot boxes. Yeah. Probably. I, I, yeah, it's a tough one because, like, if they don't regulate themselves, then eventually the government has to step in and make it 18 or older if you do any of that stuff. It's like mm-hmm. alcohol and gambling. They Why do they have to step in? Right. Because somebody out there is going to be like, well, I can make money off these kids. I'm going to do it yeah. unless the government says it's illegal. All right. You know what kids like? Alcohol and gambling. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol and gambling. <laughs> you know what's highly gonna addictive that. for I'm going to really target that. 11 to 13 year old market <laughs> you know? they get drunk so easy and then you just bring them to the casino and all their money is ours uh, yeah i mean they used to sell the the candies that look like cigarettes right because kids like to pretend that they were yep. smoking Dude, i totally bought the those when i was a kid we i used to too. walk around smoking yeah. them <laughs> that's hilarious Sex, drugs and rock and roll exactly Hell yeah the kids are all about <laughs> and then you get old and you're like eh you know so do you think it's okay if they just straight up if they just sell exactly what it is that if you want to buy it and that's okay for the microtransactions to be in the game yeah i think that's much more straightforward it's much more honest because it's not gambling right you're not you're not gambling of a chance of this one thing that you want and getting all this crap you don't want and have to keep spending yeah, the problem is that the the video game companies are going to make a ton less money doing it that oh, way. Oh, yeah. And they know it, right? Oh. They know that the reason they make so much money from loot boxes is because people only have to spend a little bit at a time, and they're always hoping to get that really cool thing. Yeah. But if, if they can't do loot boxes, they're going to have to sell that really cool thing for much more money. And then all of a sudden, well, I'm not spending a dollar. I'm spending $18 for you know a suit that looks like Iron Man. Ah, uh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. I'm not into that. So, when yeah, in, exactly you know, the loot box hides the transaction. They hide the actual price of the things. It does. That's yeah. why they, it's, you know, that's why they exist. It's a surprise mechanic. It is a surprise mechanic. Surprise, a, you're poor is. now. <laughs> it's a surprise. It definitely is a surprise. Surprise, you can't pay your mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm personally okay if you can just straight up buy what you want directly. Yeah, same. Yeah, because in certain games, I, see, I still have a problem with it in Destiny because, like, it's a loot based game. The whole point of playing Destiny is to go out and, like, find loot. So, to have some of the best gear in the game be just for purchase, like, it takes away some of the fun of loot looting, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, in certain that. games, I like it. I'm fine with it. Like, in Fortnite, I'd be fine with it. In Apex, I'd be fine with it. In other games, I'm like, well, you're ruining kind of the. In Borderlands, like, I don't want, you know, I don't want the best guns in the game to be. You know, in the store, mm-hmm. I want them to be out yeah. there lootable. Yeah, yeah, and, that's understandable. Okay. And most of these don't do that. There's only been a few cases where EA has put in surprise yeah. mechanics of <laughs> weapons and characters that, and they got Character. they got spanked for that pretty quick. Um, yeah, but yeah, the the RNG of it is really what the problem is, and like, and also it kids is the problem, you don't kids not knowing how to control themselves. Well, yeah, because it's exciting, right? And you want to just you, you want to keep going. You want to keep going. Oh, I got the thing that I want. Maybe I can get this other thing that I want. Mm-hmm. Keep going. And it's all designed to make you feel that the the big explosions, the bright colors, the that all adds to the excitement of seeing that loot box open. What was it the CS:GO lotteries a few years ago that a couple of YouTubers got in trouble for? Right? That, yep. it's yeah. this, that was preying on the exact same tendencies. Like, okay, you know, you you pay a little bit of money to get into this lottery, and you could win. You know, this super cool knife with, like, rainbow, you know, graphics on it. But you're yeah. probably going to get shit on. Mm-hmm. But you could. You could win. <laughs> and all their videos showed you winning. You might be that one person that then gets to rub it in the face <laughs> of all your friends. Possibly. <laughs> but. <laughs> and there's some games that are literally created as the rng games like the the gotcha games from japan where oh, totally. the whole game is just putting in money and trying to get the best stuff from from complete rng wow i feel like that's but why that's i don't play any mobile games anymore is because they've all turned into you know well you gotta 
yeah, you gotta buy this, you gotta buy that. I'm like, well, I'd much rather spend, you know, on a, especially for a mobile game, five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars up front, and then for the rest of my gameplay experience, not be like nickel and dimed, you know, not feel like I'm constantly being harassed for more money. You know, it's like hanging out with a friend who's always asking for money. Like, fuck, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't know what the solution is going to be. I feel like we're going to be pretty far out of getting an across all game solution. Based on EA's <laughs> language, I don't think it's coming from the from the video game companies. I think this no, is going to the solution they, is definitely coming from the governments, and that's sad. it's going to have to. When when EA is in there being like, well, it's not loot boxes, and they also said that they think it's per perfectly ethical. They said that they disagree that it's gambling, and they disagree that these th things lead to any kind of gambling. They sound like the cigarette companies when they're getting sued in the nineties. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they totally sound like that. Like completely changing like the language of a loot box to a surprise mechanic. Like you're not fooling anybody. You're just trying to reframe this. Like when she says that, watch shared that video right before the right before the show and when she says that, you can see it in her eyes. She doesn't even buy it. Like, <laughs> like she looks down she's like, "Fuck. <laughs> Am I going to get through this one?" <laughs> Oh, and man. this wasn't the only uh, memeable thing that was said during this whole thing. We had Epic Games step up to the microphone and said something equally hilarious. Oh, boy. So mm. they were talking about how how much money do you make? Uh, how much money is someone going to spend if they play your game frequently? So there was a whole back and forth of what's frequently? Would you consider a frequent player? What's a lot of money? Who knows? What is money? <laughs> it's a mystery. Um, and, what is funny? What's a blowjob? What what constitutes sex? What, <laughs> what does is mean? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so ridiculous. So um, they there was this, just this back and forth and they were like, so how, how much money did you make from Fortnite? And the guy said, I don't think it's accurate to define Epic as making money from people playing the game. No, people, people, Epic makes money from people buying loot boxes. That's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> How can and, they possibly uh, I mean, say luckily, that? I, I don't know. Luckily, the guy called him out and he was like, well, you're not a charity. You're not making a game right. free out of the goodness of your heart. And they were like, no. Epic's not a nonprofit. It's not a it's nonprofit. Not. They surprising. made two point four billion last year from from Fortnite from people buying skins. Do you think they why actually... are people buying skins for their character? They play with them. They're not just buy. There's just collect. There's not some guy just collecting skins who doesn't play the game. No, right. I haven't. I haven't looked at the Fortnite store in a long, long time. But is there actually a loot box in Fortnite? The the not the BR. I, I thought it's like it only rotates. Like weekly, like rotate specific things that you can buy. Yeah, because I I actually don't know. I haven't played Fortnite in a long time. I thought the whole the the llama pinata things were the that was in Save the World. No, uh, okay, Save the World is different. Yeah, um, that's yeah. So people can direct purchase the things that they want. I think what this what this issue was more about is that Fortnite is clearly geared towards children. It's a large percentage of children that play this game. So they're saying, you know, is it okay to have all these things in the game that cost real money that kids are going to want and they can easily purchase. Yeah. It's just silly that these companies are like, uh, well, we don't technically make money at Fortnite. It's like, oh, it's what? so ridiculous. They're like we make money at the skins, not lying. Fortnite. It's like, what? Come right. on. Oh my God. Like who's going to buy the skins if they're not playing the game? Obviously they're buying the skins because they're playing the free to play version of the game. They want to show off. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's all the all the things that they were doing. Just watching this whole thing was just technicality, technicality. How can I squeeze right. out of it? Instead of just being honest, like, yeah, we make money from people buying skins. Okay, well, do you think that's predatory towards children because your game goes towards children? And then they just have to be honest with what they're doing and maybe put in more steps for people to make a purchase so that it's not children just spending thousands of dollars of their parents' money. I, so I wonder how, how this goes for them in a, like in, in the world where they just have a conversation with you know the lawmakers and they, you know, look... It costs a lot of money to make these games. We need a revenue stream if we're going to keep making them. There's a lot of people who work here that rely on this stuff getting bought. So, yeah, we understand that you guys don't like this loot box, you know, centered thing. But 
you know, we also are really reticent to get rid of it because it does make us, you know, a huge amount of revenue. So, like, let's talk. Let's have a conversation about, like, what's crossing the line in your eyes. Like, how do we protect the kids but also keep our revenue stream intact? But because yeah. they're being dickheads about it, they're just going to get chopped off at the knees and they nobody's going to feel bad for them. Exactly. It, it, that, yeah. I mean, it's, exactly it's right. the, the tobacco company comparison is just perfect perfect alignment oh, perfect. because they're like yeah. oh, no way this causes cancer no way you're gonna get a gambling addiction no way like kids are having an issue with their credit cards because of this it's like well yeah. obviously they are by just taking a glance <laughs> i mean even just for me experiencing it you know i used to buy so many hearthstone cards just because hearthstone card packs because it's just exciting to open it and then there's a gold shiny card and you're like oh i got a gold shiny card well, now I want to get like a legendary card and I want to get a gold shiny of this legendary card. And then I can dismantle it all for dust to then buy the things that I want. So mm -hmm. it's I, that's why I'm, I'm actually happy that Bungie's switching things up with like um, dismantling things for dust, because that was a big reason why I bought a lot of Hearthstone packs was to be able to dismantle them to buy the stuff that I wanted. So that's another way to get people to purchase more things that they don't actually want. Cause you're just buying right. things from the Eververse store, right? To get the dust, to be able to dismantle it, to buy the thing that you want. So I, I'm happy with that practice kind of going away as well. Cause that is a huge thing that makes people want to keep buying stuff. Mm -hmm. Anytime they try and obfuscate, you know, the what they're actually trying to do, like mm -hmm. that just lends to mistrust. Like you might come into a system like that being like, oh, well, you know, it's it's actually nice that when you break down this stuff, you get bright dust so you can actually buy the thing you want. But no, they're actually trying to get you. Well, if I get a little more bright dust, then I can afford what I want. You know, but when they get rid of these systems, like to me, it lends trust to the developers, right? It's like, okay, like if you're being upfront, like I understand that you want to make money. You understand that you want to make money. Like everybody knows this is a business, right? right? Yeah, they want to yeah. keep doing it. But they if you're just money. trying to trick me all the time, then fuck yourself. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like, you know, like go, go to hell. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna interact with it at yeah, all. Yeah, dishonesty rings and resonates for a long time. Oh yeah, it really yeah. does, right? Mm -hmm. And Briar, you you nailed it with just saying, you know, let's have a talk. I let's be real. I have to make money. We have the games are yeah. getting more expensive. I it's millions of dollars to create these games now. Let's talk about it. Let's be honest about it. Let's figure out a way to protect children from spending all this money, getting gambling addictions, and also create a revenue stream. So you you completely nailed it. But going yeah. in here just being like, Epic makes no money. What do you mean? I don't know. Especially after the report of it making two point four billion in like what was yeah, it, two thousand eighteen? Yeah. I mean go how <laughs> they're going broke after generating two point four billion? I mean Somebody is buying toilet seats for forty thousand dollars. If that's happening, yeah. I mean, look, look at what Epic is doing right now. They're building a store to compete with Steam. They, you know, they're getting exclusive titles for their store. That money's coming from somewhere. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like their whole this is Epic expensive whole stuff they're doing. Future plans is backed by kids buying skins on Fortnite. <laughs> right. <laughs> Until it's illegal, they know it's illegal. That's why they're building the store. Right? Is they they know. That eventually this gravy train will end. So they're planning for the future. That's where the store's coming from, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But Lord knows they wanna they want that gravy train to keep on flowing for as long as possible. See, I, I don't <laughs> mind the way that Fortnite does it. Like Fortnite BR is is free, and then you can buy skins for your character directly. There's no gambling involved. But the problem with Epic's part of this whole thing is that it's there's nothing stopping a child from buying that stuff online right and to ex i think to expect parents to be absolute experts in everything when it comes yeah, to rough. games is a little bit unreasonable like you know they're not gonna i mean th they can they can go they can load up the fortnite store and be like okay well what's what's my kid gonna do this is what they could do how can i stop them from doing it and maybe you can just not link a card to your account but then it gets even more confusing if you play fortnite as well and your kid plays fortnite and you want to buy skins do you have to unlink your card or your paypal every time your kid wants to hop on i think i think there could be an extra step between i want to purchase skin as a child and purchasing skin i see in I chat like, like people kind of blaming the parents where are the parents parents not parenting yeah. yo parents have a lot of shit to do <laughs> right <laughs> like there's more than just like one thing that you're focusing on 
And God forbid that you have a little bit of alone time that you could read a book or watch a TV show, an adult program, and your kids are just playing a video game that you think is fairly innocent. Not everybody is doing podcasts and shit. And, you know, is like super, you know, into like the whole world of Fortnite and video games. A lot of people are disconnected box. from some that people, stuff. Yeah, some people Super are, disconnected. you know, know all about aerospace or know all about, you know, the hospitality industry, but don't know dick all about video games. And, you know, God forbid that they get a little bit of break from, you know, parenting so they can watch Game of Thrones once a week and their kid plays a little bit of Fortnite. You know, like, let's ease up on parents here a little bit. <laughs> Because it's also, it's just, you know, that's why I, I was talking more so about putting things on the box that parents could look out for and not have to be complete experts in everything yeah. where it says there are in-game purchases. And I know they have that, but make it really clear, you know, make it clear that if it's a game for children, it's like your kid could spend all your money in this video game. Just want you to know that. Beware. <laughs> Maybe don't right. leave the card. Yeah. I, I feel like they need to have two type of accounts, like a... They, they need a, an mm. adult account and an underage yeah. account. And the underage account has to have like extra extra confirmations and extra security stuff that says, hey, you're spending over 50 bucks. You're going to have to have like whatever approval process happens in order to make sure. Yeah, that you can have two factor authentication where maybe it sends a code to your, your mom's phone. Yeah, exactly. And she has to say, yes, I approve of this. I think there's just other things that they could do. Yeah. But again, Besides, that doesn't really fix yeah. what we just talked about of like parents not being involved in those those things. Right. But I think if they're if they're not going to self regulate, then there's going to be things that have to be put into place that make them do that, and that is ultimately going to be a government that says, "Hey, you got to have things in there that distinguish between a uh, an adult account and a, um, a non adult account." Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That could be that could be a good solution because they they have to because like there's no reason. To suddenly go spend 500 bucks on a game. Like, no. there's no reason. If you want to, no. I totally get that. I'm I'm not saying that's wrong, but there's no reason for a new account to show up and suddenly drop 500 bucks in like 30 minutes on um, on those, those store items. So they, they need to have restrictions in there. My so, boys just graduated high school, and I've kind of been like, I met them when they were nine years old, and I kind of like was introducing them to technology on the way. And every every step of the way, they found a way around the parental controls. I gave them Kindle and locked it so they couldn't use the internet. They found out that if they did an Amazon review, that got them access to the internet. Oh my god! Right, so like they had full a <laughs> on a Kindle, they had full access to the internet because there was you know this this little side door. If given unlimited time, mm. they always find a way. Right, yeah. it doesn't matter what the yeah. system is; they've always found a way to get unlimited access. Even if there are parental controls on the device. Wowza. <laughs> Jeez. They're yeah, not stupid was... and they've got unlimited time. <laughs> got... Yeah, because I was looking at chat and I saw, you know, some people who are parents and they have uh, parental controls on uh, PlayStation, for example, where Extreme Dan said, My kid's PSN has a parental lock, no password, no PS store. Yeah. I was just. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's things that are in place, but it unfortunately kids are progressing just as fast as the technology is of getting right. around it. You know, you have and if a they're highly motivated the government. What the hell, man? Right. Um if they're highly motivated to get past the system, plus all their friends are working on the same yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. at school. They're in they're in a group chat, like guys, <laughs> you figure out how to get into the, the PSN right. store yet. I remember when I was in college, we figured out that Instead of signing on for AOL, there was like a help button. And if you click the help button, it would log you into AOL. And then you just like kind of ignore the help window. And you could use AOL but not be getting charged for it. Because that back in those days, oh, wow. you dialed into AOL over a phone yeah. line. And they charged you per minute. Damn, yeah. per minute. <laughs> wow. That's nuts. Yeah. That was nuts. <laughs> well, we've been uh, hampering. or Yeah, we've, we've been... We've been expressing our opinions about uh, loot boxes and all that and uh, in kind of a darker side of the gaming industry. Um, I think mm. we should flip that and take a yeah, look. Yeah, let's flip it. Let's flip it onto the bright side of gaming. And the Guardian Always Con stream the ended <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> uh, Dr. Lupo finished it and, um, and came out with a record-breaking $920,000, over $920,000. Raised That's in four crazy. hours. Crazy. 
just think about that. That's four four and a half hours. And the, did you you also saw that they broke down how many individual donators there was? There was just I think it was ten thousand seven hundred something. Wow, that's like, amazing. That's nine over, well over nine hundred thousand, almost a million dollars from ten thousand, eleven thousand individual people is not in four and a half hours. That's nuts. Like, that's Outstanding. Crazy. That's incredible. That is absolutely insane absolutely incredible did did we get a final tally on where the the guardian con ticker is at was it 3.7 3. point something yeah yeah or they tweeted it out and i i forgot the what the point was but so year to date well over three million yeah three three point seven or somewhere around there for uh for saint jude it's uh three point seven yeah yep. That's an incredible amount of money. I mean, that's that's through the power of gaming. Yeah, that's, that's through the the communities. Uh, obviously, Destiny community is very supportive of these events, and yeah. and the the Guardian Con experience was born out of the Destiny community. But like the fact that all these various gaming communities come together, and um, and showing that kind of generosity and support is just it's it's amazing. It's humbling. It is amazing. It's it's very emotional. It's seeing all of these people from all sizes. You know, the the stream had people of smaller communities, larger communities, people from all different games, and all of those communities came together, understanding that Saint Jude is such an amazing thing. What they do is phenomenal, and wanting to support that. And it's yeah, it's a perfect showcase of how amazing gaming can be because gaming brings people together. Like no other thing mm -hmm. people bond over these games they get best friends you know they find lovers they find everything over video games so it's a huge bond that those communities have so them it makes sense come together and make an absolute ton of money for the charity yeah it's incredible there's not a better cause out there either yep yeah it's um it's a great it's a great place for common interest for people to, to come together and and share those moments so there's a lot of great things that come out of gaming and oh, yeah. Guardian Con is definitely one of the one of the peaks right there. So that's an amazing uh, milestone right there. Nine hundred twenty thousand, over nine hundred twenty thousand dollars in four hours, four ish hours. That's stupendous. It's like mind blowing, yeah. right? Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, so I actually saw CC Coon yesterday, and in person. And what was he doing? we were talking. We were at Dado's house for his Daniel. Was it suspicious birthday. activity? Oh, okay. He was he was <laughs> playing magic. He was there. He was ah, here, suspicious he's here activity. For magic. He's, he's here. For That's magic. definitely suspicious activity. <laughs> <laughs> um, and CC Coon. So if you know people don't know who CC Coon is, he is a legend in the Destiny community. Anytime there's a charity event that comes up, he donates an insane yep. amount of money and he started off the dcp block by dropping twenty five thousand dollars and we were talking about our incentives and how briar was getting nervous as we could see as we were getting closer to the butt tattoo and he said <laughs> that he would not have let it happen if he was available and watching he would have he would have well, thank god sure. he was busy <laughs> Good Lord. Tefty might be here without a beard if CC was around. <laughs> it's dangerous. Dangerous times right there. CC claims everything. He makes people warlocks. He gets tattooed on people. Yeah, man. I honestly thought you know, that the waxing my arm was going to be a stretch goal. And then I saw the graphic. <laughs> and it was like the first thing on there. Hey, race. Race 25 cents and Briar will rip his <laughs> the hair off his arm. <laughs> okay, listen. This thinking here was we were following. Sifu <laughs> has lots of kids. What do kids like? I don't know. Men in pain. So <laughs> we decided to stop. There it is. We decided that kids are all about the drug, sex, and alcohol and gambling, right? Yeah. So we figured mm -hmm. Briar waxing his arm is the perfect beginning <laughs> to. <laughs> to <protect. laughs> oh, man. That's great. Yeah, so it's been an amazing week. Um, absolute incredible it week. Has been. Sad, uh, sad. I'm not going to be going to Garden Con. It looks like it's going to be an amazing, uh, amazing event this year. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great time. It yeah. looks, it looks fantastic. It's on a resort, so if you're staying there, you don't even have to go outside. You just walk straight through to the convention. Which sounds place. ideal for Florida in the summer. It don't have to go right. outside. The worst part about Florida is Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Going outside in the humidity. There's also an island and alligators. in the pool that has <laughs> If I could just stay completely insulated from Florida during my stay, the better I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm super sad to not be going. The things that they've done this year are, are nuts. Bungie's there. Borderlands going to be there. 
You've got Warframe that's always there, right? Um, I think a Sea of Thieves is going. Yeah, really? nice. Guardian, There's a lot of people showing up this Guardian year. Con is that. becoming like a legit gaming event. Not not that it yeah, wasn't yeah. before, but like in the it, it's it's gunning to be one of those PAX, PAX West East. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's cool to see it grow so much over the past. Like I think it's been five years now when it first started as like a yeah, it's it's. It's really impressive what they've been able mm-hmm. to do. And they've started Guardian Con with the thoughts of charity behind it as well. Yeah. Which is which is amazing. You know, PAX kind of did the same thing where you're starting as this, starting as a charity and creating something massive. And I think this is amazing that they've created this event where people are legitimately going to be looking at the calendar and they're like, which one do I want to go to? I'm going to Guardian Con. Yeah. And Guardian Con's always had this special sense of community where you can because it started in the destiny world we can all go there and we know we're going to meet everyone mm-hmm. it's always been a real central location for destiny people so i'm super sad i can't go this yep. year i'm excited for next year exactly it's only going to get bigger yep yeah yeah well uh is there anything else that we want to talk about this episode oh by the way we didn't talk about uh iceborn uh, monster underworld iceborn because yeah, yeah. we wanted to wait for eric's on that obviously there's a beta going on right now what's you've been playing it? are we gonna lose our our six episode streak if not talking about monster <laughs> hunter so okay we, we're trying to get a little more uh you know a little better at like bringing up a game and then next week bringing up the game again then bringing up the game again unless there's something massive going on but um so iceborn is having Recently, just at, over the weekend, it had a PS Plus beta. So if you had PS Plus, you could play the Iceborne beta. But they're having a beta for everyone on PlayStation on June 28th. So I figured we could we could all talk about it after then because yep. then maybe more people have played it. Um, and then Eric's will be here, who's huge on Monster Hunters. So if it just kind of made sense to talk about Iceborne when he's here. Yeah, exactly. And after he's huge beta. on everything. The dude's like eight feet tall. Yeah. He's a Viking. He's really tall. He's massive. Really <laughs> he has his beard oil. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he has his own beard. Yeah. 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 All right. You really respect that, don't you? Absolutely, man. <laughs> he got, got his me, own beard. Got me thinking. <laughs> that is dope. <laughs> you should do it, Tessie. Yeah. Really yeah. I, I, I'd be super picky about it. Yeah. That's better. That's even better. No. People would know you don't say. Quality, hefty, <laughs> hefty product. If I don't like the smell. I'm gonna be like, how do I, how do I put this lightly? <laughs> <laughs> it stinks. Stop. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the episode for this week then, right? I think that's it. Yeah. It fun. Yeah. It's a fun episode. Very fun. Uh, if you want to find more of me, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. Catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Teft. Uh, also, use code Tefty Teft in the Epic Store when you're uh, spending hundreds of dollars. When you're not spending money, obviously. <laughs> no one spends money. <laughs> when you're not spending money in the Epic Store, you can use my code. <laughs> Uh, I am a Spy Thousand Watch. You can catch me streaming in about I don't know, 30 minutes or so um, nice. if you're watching live. Hello. Um, otherwise, just look for me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Miss Spy Thousand Watch. I'm Briar Rabbit. You can catch me driving to my mother's house to build a potting table for her deck in about 20 minutes. Mm. Um, nice. Love Very to fun. see you there. Uh, I could really use some help carrying that thing across the house. Share the load. Uh, it comes. Yeah, it's two-man lift and uh there's only one man here we're really half a man at that let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh right, okay. w- once again i do want to say thank you to our uh, patreon members as well for supporting the show it makes it happen and uh, we are very thankful for you guys and also uh all the support that we get live and in various areas on the internets it's very kind guys very very kind we will see you next week for another episode Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.